Hello, welcome. Let's put some finishing touches now on our sprite rendering class. We'll open up our project here. There we go. We left off with our basic sprite rendering class. If we run this, here's what we ended up with last time. Uh, just drawing a sprite in the screen there. Now let's add a few more functions and also I, I noticed last time that I did not add the effect to the dispose function. So let's go ahead and put that in just to clean that up. And now let's just add a few more functions for drawing sprites. The last one is very basic, just a position and color. We did provide an origin for the transformation. Let's make a function that has a little bit more to it. So first of all, we want to be able to provide the source rectangle. So. And let's talk about what the source rectangle looks like. If we have a texture that looks like this, we may want to only draw a part of that texture. Let's say we have a smiley face right here. It would be a waste to draw this whole texture just to get that smiley face on the screen. We can tell the graphics card that we just want to draw this region starting at this point. So we say starting at this point, draw this much width and then draw this much height. The source rectangle could be any width and we just tell it the piece that we want. So back in our code, we want to specify the source rectangle. Let's again provide the origin of transformation. Now let's give it all the transformation pieces. So position, rotation, and scale. And actually scale, let's make that a vector too because we may want to scale the X and the Y at different lengths and the color. This one will give us a lot more options. And let's see if we have anything. We'll say, tell the sprite class, that the sprite batch class that we want to draw. We'll just pass on through the texture, pass on the position, source rectangle, color. And it looks like we're just basically gonna pass these things through. Origin, scale, and I think there's an overloaded, there it is, vector two for scale. Sprite effects, again, we're gonna to wanna to flip vertically because we changed the coordinate system and layer depth will just be zero. We can try this out now. If we go back to our game class and instead of doing this function, let's call the other one. The other one wants a source rectangle. Let's see, where is it? There it is. We're gonna give it a new rectangle. We're gonna start at zero, zero. And actually, I'm just gonna draw the whole texture. So I'm going to start at 0, 0. The texture width is 16, and the texture height is 16. So I'm just going to specify that as the whole thing. And actually, we could, let's go back to the code. We could, if we want to specify the whole source rectangle, we could give this a question mark, which means it's nullable value type. In which case, if we pass null through, it says optional region the texture will be rendered if null draws full texture. And so we can just make ours nullable as well, and we'll pass on null and draw the whole texture. So let's do that. Instead of me specifying the whole texture here, we'll just pass on null. Next parameter, the origin will still be zero. The position, let's leave that where it is. Rotation, let's specify a rotation just to see it working. So math helper is inside the mono game namespace. Let's just do uh, like a nice 45 degree angle. So we'll say pi over four. And there might be a pi over four constant. Now there is a pi over 4 constant. We'll use that one. Scale, and let's make this bigger. So how about 4 times the size? So we'll need a new vector 2. Then I'll scale it 4 times on the x and the y. And I think we have all everything in there we need. So let's see what happens when we run this. All right, there we go. So it looks like it scaled it from this point here since I specified the origin of transformation as 0, 0 went 45 degrees this way and then scaled four times. So that looks perfect. Looks like that's working. And there's one more method I'm going to use. This will take a texture 2D. Again, we're gonna be able to specify the source rectangle and it will be nullable just in case we want to do the whole thing. I want to 
be able to specify the destination rectangle. So let's call this destination rectangle and also the color. We can specify the source rectangle, but also we can specify a destination rectangle. If I have maybe the source is this big, so we got a 16 by 16. But when we draw it, let's say I want it to fill the whole screen. I can now say a destination rectangle will have this point and this width and this height. Okay, we'll call it destination width and destination height and it'll scale to fit at that point. You can simply call the sprite batch draw routine that corresponds to that. And there's the destination rectangle. I wonder if there's an overload that has a source. Yeah, that one has a source rectangle. So we're going to use that one. So they put the destination rectangle first. And we want to also provide the source rectangle and the color. Okay, so now let's go ahead and test that one out. So I'm going to remove everything except for the color. Now I should be able to just provide a new rectangle, which would be the destination rectangle. And let's just say I want to draw at 50 or 32, 32. So that's the point it'll start drawing. And then I can tell it the scale I want to draw. It. We'll do 512 by 256. So it's going to give it a kind of a weird skew there. But let's take a look just to test it and see if it works. All right, there we go. And as you can see, it's upside down, so it works, but we forgot to provide the flip vertically parameter. Let's see if they have one of those. So it might be this one. Yeah, I think we have to use this one because we got the destination rectangle, the source rectangle. We got the color. Rotation is just going to be zero. The origin is going to be zero. And then sprite effects will be the flip vertically and the layer depth. Now that should do the same thing, it's just going to have it flipped according to our coordinate system. And there we go, that's perfect. So far, that's everything I need to accomplish right now with the sprite batch. There will be a few more things that we're going to want to get incorporated. Once we implement a camera class, we're going to want to implement the zoom uh, feature with the camera as well. But for now, that'll be good enough to get started.